Hi everybody, welcome to AstroQ. Today I will be demonstrating how to install the ZWO EAF electronic automatic focuser. Um, I'm going to use that with my ASI Air Plus and it should bring the whole thing into a, um, a really good little system. I also have another little device that I'm going to unbox later on. You'll see that in the next video, so stay tuned and um, let's get to unboxing and assembling. So the first thing I'm going to do is break down this um, Brilliant Optics red cap. I'm going to take off the guide scope and all of the other bits and bobs. So uh, let's get cracking. I'm going to use the, um, the tools provided with the black cap mount. Uh, so it's going to give you a true reflection on what's going on now. It comes with three sets of Allen keys of uh, various sizes. So the first thing I want to do is take off the handle for the red cap and then dismantle the um, 3D printed feature. Then um, what I'm going to do is mount up the autofocuser and put the clamp on. So first things first, let's remove the handle. There we go. It's quite a nice feature, this handle. I'm just going to put a little cat face on it. It's pretty cool. So I'm just going to remove these two Allen key screws at different size, which is useful. So I'm guessing it's the next size down. There we go. As I said, I'm just using all of the Allen keys provided to uh, give a good reflection of the installation. A little bit out of balance, which I suppose it would be. Right, there we go. So this is the black cat mount. The AS sits in there, and two bolts held in with two bolts. So I'll put that at the back, and we continue with what we're doing. It comes with a bag of screws and nuts and bolts and washers. Also comes with some 3D printed grates. Gears, should I say? They sit around there. Um, I've been using this red catalog to try and get some comet shots, so it's already in a good focus. So I've locked this off. I'm going to put these on loosely, and um, they go with the AEF. And we get around to that little bit in a minute. So first things first, we need to take these out of the bag. waiting a long time to get the EAF. There was a wait and then so that's a wait to get some other bits but now it's all come together I can finally assemble it which is quite nice. Right so I'm guessing as the SI sits on that side we need to concentrate on this side so I'm going to turn the scope around and we can see what we're doing. There's two square nuts here and they go into these holes and what they're going to do is retain these bolts and the bolts go through that part and hold it into position when it's on the focuser so uh, I'll just pop these in and show you how to install them just pop them down a little bit of resistance, if that's the case, Let's push it down, it should line up. Use a thin around and key, there you go. Get it all the way down until it's lined up. Then the screw, then the um, Allen key will line up with that, pull it into position and we'll be good to go. So these um, nuts are in situ here, what I'd recommend you do is offer up the, the um, Allen key or hex bolt, screw it in just to make sure it's running down, there's no burrs in it. So just run it in and out, that's fine. Uh, next up I'm going to offer it up into here. This is a rough setting from um, catching the comet the other night. So what I'm going to do, make sure this side is facing towards your objective end because obviously We've got the cob from the AF and that's going to inter interact with these uh, features here. 
give yourself plenty of room because the uh, EFA has got to work. And then um, I'll do some nuts and bolts up and I'll show you how to get on. I'm just um, doing it a little bit at a time at the minute. I'm screwing this one in and I'll bring it around to the other side then bring it back on itself. Make sure this is locked off with the focus ring so you don't change your focus while you're um, moving bits and bobs around because that would be a great shame to lose your focus and then you'll be back to square one. You want a nice even pressure so it doesn't put any strain on the, on the motor. I'm gonna do this up a little bit more and then start to install the EAF. Okay, so as you can see, I've got the ZWO EOF um, electronic automatic focuser um, for this William Optics Red Cap 51. First time I'm unboxing it, so this is quite cool. What we've got here is the instructions. This is a two meter lead, um, USB 2. We've got some screws labeled up couple more Allen keys. Oh, we've got a mount as well for a standard telescope. Hopefully that'll work on my other um, William Optics. But I don't need that today. And we've got some various attachments. Uh, we won't be using those. We'll just be using this motor today. So um, we take that out, get it unboxed pop it on this uh, black cap mount because that's the one I'm going to be using. So I'm going to take this out of this bag. It's quite quite weighty really for what it is. I'm surprised. Um, so you've got the temperature controller that goes in there. That's in that bag. Uh, USB 2. That's that lead. There's also an automatic controller. I guess that must go in there as well, so there's only other one hole. We'll have a look as we get along. So that's going to sit in here. Offer it up like that. Pop that through. Make sure it's nice and smooth. So it balances out really well actually, it's going to sit down on the telescope pretty good. So the next step is uh, to install these printed and all 3D printed gears onto the pinion. I'll do that in a sec. First thing I need to do is install one of these little nuts again in here. Just push that down so it's a nice solid fit. Again, use the Allen key just to just to square it up. So we've got a good run. I'm going to use one of the small grub screws just so it doesn't interfere with anything. So I've decided to pull out the um, Allen key from the autofocus kit to put that on. So you may notice there is actually a flat um, on the autofocuser. So what I've got to do is line up the flat with the grub screw like that and get as little play as possible within it so it can be done up nice and snug and it all locates lovely that's picked up on the uh, on the nut that's inserted you don't want to do it up too tight but just tight enough so it doesn't move during operation so do a little tweak Pull it out, check again, yeah, that's great. And that's for that part of the insulation. Next up, we've got to secure on these two little things here, put the little bolts in, or the nuts. So for that, we need two little screws, or two little hex bolts, and some washers, just to hold it into position. So I'll get the washers, pop them on the end. Get 
get the correct Allen key, which would be useful. And there we go, that one. Rocker it up into that hole, nice and gently. One in. Repeat the procedure with the other one. Again, offer up the washer. Use the Allen key to guide it in the hole. Everything matches up really well. If you look at that, you can see the threads within the 3D printed unit. So we're just going to tighten it up now. careful not to cross thread anything because that would be a disaster. Take it in. Nice and slow. No rush. And that is secure that into this unit. Give yourself a fair bit of room between your rack and your pinion wheel because you're not sure how much room you're going to need. So what I'm going to do now is just offer this up, should line up hopefully, um, just use the back of your finger and the, uh, the screws or the bolts, and bolts, whatever you want to call them, should line up with their hole eventually. There we go, that one's in. I'll just leave him there loose. That one will naturally line up. A little bit of jiggling around. There we go. Always screw backwards before you screw on. Because then that way you know you're gonna pick up on the on the thread easy. That's a nice, nice little tip for you there. And it also uh, reduces the risk of cross threading. So nip him up a little bit. And that one. Trying to keep it nice, nice and flush for a good finish. Oh, nice finish. So that's lined up now nicely with the tooth. You can see they're engaged. But what we do need to do is because these were put on loose, move it back so it's a good snug fit with the gear in. Allow a little bit of play because things will cool down and heat up with the weather. And let's finish tightening this up. And we'll tighten these two screws up. If you notice, there's plenty of room here. I say it's about central. This is, a, this, this is a good focus point for my setup at the minute. Um, as I said, I suggest you do the same. Let's check it on a star. It's not cloudy. And then give yourself plenty of room either way, so that way you can achieve focus quite easily. So what I'm going to do now is evenly tighten up these two screws on here. And then we'll have the EFA, or EAF even, installed. Next thing, we just put the rest of the hardware on. Reinstall the handle for the red cap. Quite a nice um, swish bit of kit. Let's do that up quick. Nice and loose. Do the other one up loosely. Get a bit of support on there. Go in. Show off that one. Make sure we got to get it straight because that's where the guide camera sits. So again, we come off this back edge here. square as you can. Is that a bit tight? Give that a bit of a nip. Use the whole length of the bar. That's it. And again we do the same here. It's deep enough. I don't know if it'll be deep enough actually. Oh yeah, just about, about a little nip. No tighter than that. And that'd be nice and secure for next for the next um, session. I'm gonna put the scope on. Like the mini scope and the um, ASI 
120 mini, just slide that along. Again, I always go off the back of this and then you can repeat it. We have accuracy, which is what we want. Line it all up. Lovely. You don't have to do, you don't have to do everything really tight, it's just a, a little nip to make sure it's secure. Right, that's the installation complete. Next up, try the software out. We should be in business. The final part of the EAF um, installation video. That's all on. As you can see, the space is nice. We've got good bits of space in here. The gaps are fairly equal. Hope that picks it up in the shot. So then, all we need now is clear skies. So uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.